So if you look up here, the, so the ovaries make estradiol, the strongest estrogen, and estrone, the strong, more abundant estrogen. And it's converted in the liver to estriol, which is a weak, short-acting, protective estrogen. The plant placenta also makes estriol when we're pregnant. And after menopause, estrone is made by the adrenal glands and the fat cells. So we know that. And there's something called the estrogen quotient, which you have on page 54. So it is the ratio between estriol, which is the weak protective estrogen, divided by estradiol plus estrone. So really that ratio is telling us how is the liver breaking down estradiol and estrone. Uh, it's telling you a little bit about how much estradiol and estrone there is relative to estriol, or how much is the bowel uh, excreting estradiol and estrone. So all those things will play into this ratio. It's the production, the breakdown, and the excretion. So some studies have shown that when this estrogen quotient is between 0.5 and 0.8, there's an increased breast cancer risk. That means there's more estradiol and estrone relative to estriol. If it's above 1.2, there's a decreased breast cancer risk. And the phytoestrogens aid in the conversion of estradiol to estriol. And the phytoestrogens and iodine both increase the estrogen quotient, which you want. The higher this number is, the better. So how do you measure this? How many of you have had this measured? Anybody? So you measure it. The way I measure it is with a lab in the States called Neuroscience. And capital N and capital S, and sort of it's one word, neuroscience. And uh, they also are, might go under the, uh, the, under the name of Pharmasan, P-H-A-R-M-A-S-A-N. And they have a lot of different types of saliva and blood tests for monitoring hormones and neurotransmitters. And the one that's most useful for breast health is called postmenopause one. And it's a saliva test that measures estradiol, estrone, estriol, progesterone, DHEA, and testosterone, all of those, in, in one saliva sample. So you do a saliva sample if you're menstruating between day 20 and 23 of your cycle, if you've got a 28-day cycle. Um, and if you're not menstruating, you just do it any time. And you'll see, you know, what this ratio is. And if the ratio is too low, if it's between 0.5 and 0.8, then we, we manipulate it with diet and supplements until it's OK. And then you've just improved your estrogens, right? So it's knowing how well your supplements are working for you to get this into balance. So I had one patient who has had a history of thyroid disease and cystic lumpy tender breast. She was young. She's probably in her 30s when I first saw her. And uh, her grandmother or aunt, I forget which, had breast cancer. And um, her, it was interesting because her, her estradiol and estrone are always high. And she also has um, a large uterine fibroid. She's just prone to make more estrogen. And so we did this test. And she, when she took two or three tablespoons of psyllium a day, three tablespoons of ground flaxseed a day, lots of turmeric every day, and something called NAC and acetylcysteine, which helps the liver. Um, I think that was about it. She was able to, to and indole three carbonyl. She was able to get it in range, but it's it's been I've been working with her for now probably about eight years, and she still has to stay on top of it. It's it's a it's a big problem for her. This this estrogen dominance, even though her progesterone's okay. It's interesting. It's just this this susceptibility to high estrogen. I don't know. I don't know. She doesn't have, she's now, she's now, she's 40, I think, or 42. She's never had a child. And, uh, you know, who knows, you know, all the psychological factors. I don't know. It's, it's maybe, you know, the liver, the liver, metabolic function of the liver in not processing the estrogen. She wasn't, and she did have a problem with constipation when I first met her. So part of it is poor liver function and poor elimination. And so she was reabsorbing the estrogen and not breaking it down. But it's more than that. Her ovaries just produce more of it. Yes? Um, there's also a company that I've seen that actually does an estrogen metabolism ratio test as well. 
That's the C2 and the C16 yeah. estrogen. That's a different test. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So there's two, there's two um, tests you can do to look at estrogen. This is one. <coughs> and the other one is the ratio between two metabolites of estrogen. One is called the C16 metabolite or C16 hydroxyestrone, and the other one is the C2. C16 is potentially damaging. The C2 is protective, so you want to know that. And both of that test is telling you about liver function. And which do you do you I do, ideally, you want to do them both. They can be different. Okay. Ideally, you want to do them both, even though it's pricey. This is about $100 to do that, that saliva test with all those five things. It's actually it's a great price. Yeah, because yeah, many other... I went to this with this lab because they have the most tests with the cheapest price. Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain doesn't do this one. They don't do. They don't give you the numbers for for estriol and this. You just need you just need these three numbers, then you can figure out the quotient. But Rocky Mountain doesn't do that. that but they have the other one, the the other ratio. Yes. So you, with the you, go through a you have to go through a naturopathic doctor or an MD. You have to go through a practitioner, though. Yeah. What? Say that again. Um. I don't, I, you know what, I don't know the answer to that question. I think, uh, I don't know. I might, they're mostly estrogen dominant. I would guess that it's about 60% probably are estrogen dominant and maybe 40 not. Most are estrogen dominant. And so if you're treating a patient who doesn't have estrogen uh, problems, yeah. do you still explore chronic like Yeah, like because, because, um, uh, a breast, all breast cells, ha it's what, what we're talking about, estrogen receptor dominant, okay? Ex estrogen receptor. All it means is that that cancer still had estrogen receptors on the cell. So all normal breast cells have receptors for estrogen and progesterone and insulin and IGF-1 and melatonin, okay? But as the cell becomes more malignant or more unusual, it might lose that receptor. Once upon a time, it was... Um, fed by estrogen, but as it's lost the receptor, there's something else that's programming it, not estrogen anymore. Uh, cells can change. So, so at one point, a tumor might be estrogen receptor dominant. A few years later, it may not be, or, or reverse. They can move on, the, on a continuum of malignancy one way or the other. So you, yes, you always want to assume or, or check to see if there's a problem with estrogen, even though if, there's, if the, the cell type at that time is estrogen receptor negative, um, estrogen won't push it anymore. You know, estrogen won't cause it to grow. But I think you still want to balance estrogen because it's also that when estrogen is balanced, the thyroid is balanced. You know, you, you, want, to, you want to have hormone balance generally. So this is a good thing to check in everybody. It would be a wonderful thing to check in every woman from the age of 20 onward so that to prevent a problem with estrogen dominance. Okay? Yes? Um, the They're not as accurate. The range in the blood test is far wider mm -hmm. of what's normal. And uh, and so this ratio I've never been able to, to do with, with a blood test. I think it's possible, but I think it's more accurate in saliva. Anybody else? Yeah? Tamoxifen... Um, is blocking the estrogen receptors? Yeah, you would, sure, because you, it's you want to have as you you still want your estrogens to be balanced, even though you're on tamoxifen. Yeah, you would we would do it. Sorry, did you say how often to do that? Well, once a year, oh, okay. as a as a preventative, and um, if you if you have a problem, then you would try to fix it and then check it one or two months later until you've got it fixed, right? The treatment protocols one to two months in general. Yeah, okay. one to two months. It should fix within about a month if you if you're doing the right things. Yeah.